If you are around my age and have younger siblings like I do, then you most likely grew up watching a little known film called Shark Boy and Lava Girl about a kid, Max, who dreams up two superheroes, Shark Boy and Lava Girl, who take him to Planet Drool for misadventures and fun. 15 years later, Netflix decided we needed a sequel to that shit and gave us We Can Be Heroes, a fairly entertaining follow-up that, I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed the living hell out of. Now, Shark Boy and Lava Girl is, as far as I understand, a slightly divisive film. You either love it or you hate it. <laughs> <laughs> or you're the weirdo like me who finds it a really, really bad movie, but extremely entertaining if you were in the right mindset. Like, I don't think Shark Boy and Lava Girl is good by any stretch of the imagination. I think it is a very poorly put together film that does its best with the limited budget and time that it has, but overall is just very disjointed and hard to follow at times. We Can Be Heroes, on the other hand, actually has a coherent plot from beginning to end and makes sense for the majority of it, which is super fun. So the main plot of We Can Be Heroes is that the superhero team, the Heroics, have been captured by aliens and it is now up to the children of the Heroics, led by the daughter of the leader of the Heroics, Missy, to lead them to free their parents. All along the way, they learn to to control their abilities and their powers so that they can work effectively as a team. And I gotta say, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. One of the reasons I personally found it fun was Missy doesn't have any powers to speak of for herself. Her only real ability is that she's able to lead by example and control and rein in these other crazy super teens. And I'm not gonna lie, that was kind of fun for me. The fact that these kids who all have superpowers listen to and respected someone who has none, I find fun. But also, the movie doesn't shy away from the fact that these characters are children. They get angry, they get rowdy, they have emotions beyond, oh, I'm Jesus child, which is something that writers, I think, fail to grasp at times. Children need to be written as children. Children are kind of assholes sometimes, and a lot of writers, I think, forget that. For example, there's a point in the film where two characters make a bet for two packs of candy of whoever can cross their eyes the best. Now, one of these characters is a shapeshifter, so he full-on crosses his eyes across his face, which is absolutely hilarious. And the response from the other kid is that he smashes and destroys destroys a desk. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that makes sense for a kid who is a kid. Also, one of my personal favorites is a little girl who's like five or six-ish, who is the daughter of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. So she has like the super strength and the frenzy nature that Shark Boy has in the first film, but she has control over water the same way that Lava Girl has control over lava, which is really funny, especially because it's a five-year-old kid. And so whenever she runs around in a shark frenzy it's really funny to watch but yeah i'm just gonna say this movie's fun i don't know that i'm gonna go back and watch it again but if i need a popcorn film to just shut off and if i'm ever like babysitting some kids and just need to turn something on for them i'll turn on we can be heroes though i will say as a sequel to shark boy and love girl it is a little confusing and disjointed because Shark Boy and Lava Girl are barely in this sequel to Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Not only are they barely in this sequel, I don't know if it's canonical with the first film. The first film, it's established that it takes place within Max's dream world. However, this movie, Max is not in it at all, and the planet Drool is never referenced in any capacity, which I'm sorry, you missed an opportunity to reference planet Drool and have it make sense. That would have been the most amazing thing. You also missed an opportunity to have at least a cameo from the original guy that played Max. How do you miss that? How? I mean, to be fair, he might actually have not wanted to return. I don't think Taylor Lautner's playing Shark Boy in this movie either, so either he didn't want to return or they didn't tap him. I don't know. Again, like I said, it's very loosely connected as a sequel to Shark Boy and Lava Girl, with the only real connection being Shark Boy and Lava Girl and their daughter. I don't want to get too much into spoilers here because this is really just a quick critical more look, but yeah, I think this movie's a hell of a lot of fun. If you are a fan of the original Shark Boy and Lava Girl, I would say go and check it out. There is a twist that is fairly obvious to see coming from a mile away, but 
again, kids movie, and even then they actually played that twist trope a little bit differently than I thought they were going to. And not only did they play the twist trope differently, the, the way that they play it differently I thought worked really well because I legitimately didn't see it coming. I was like, hmm, I wonder if they're the villain. Oh, what a surprise, they're the villain. And then at the very end when like the t actual twist, I was like, oh, I actually didn't see that coming. I am impressed. This is a very cliched kids movie ending, but hey, respect for making an ending I didn't see coming. But, like I said earlier, if you are a fan of Shark Boy and Lob Girl, I'd say go and check this film out just for the sake of checking this movie out. It's a lot of fun. It's highly entertaining if you are a fan. If you just want to turn your brain off for a minute and watch that, that's also good too. That, that's kind of my thoughts. Uh, ooh, I haven't got to do this in a while. So, I'd probably say that this movie for me rolls about a 13 out of 20. Wow, it feels great to do that again. Like I said before, this movie is made for kids. It's going to be much more entertaining for small children than it is for 22 year old adult males. I'm not going to lie, I did find this fun, but in a haha, this is hilarious, stupid kind of way, not in a this is legitimately good storytelling kind of way. If you want to check this movie out or if you have kids, I'd say give it a go and just enjoy the ride for the ridiculousness that it is. You know what? It felt really good to do a critical review of a film. I probably shouldn't call these critical reviews. This is really just Glassfoot's bullshit opinions. But yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm really sorry that I couldn't use clips from the film in this. I did want to, but the recorder I've been using stopped actually recording Netflix for some reason. I, I know that Netflix has had a history of they don't allow screenshots or anything like that, and so it's built into the programming that if you try to use one, it'll black the screen out, but I've never had an issue with that until I literally tried recording today. What you gonna do? But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Instagram links to both of those are going to be in the description down below as always. And I hope you all have a fantastic fucking day and as always, Peace out, guys.